Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we're going to be taking a look at Factory. I've been playing this map a decent amount recently and figured it was time to update the original spawns guide that I did with something a bit more in-depth. So stick around and let's get into it. Alright, so a super quick overview. Factory broadly has three main areas. It has this one with the blue containers, it has this one with the silos, and it has this one with the generators. Then you have the office area and the bathroom area that kind of runs between all three on the left hand side. The factory exit key is pretty much a required purchase if you want to play seriously as PMC as it opens up the gate 0 exit here and the seller's exit down by forklifts which means that you don't have to leave out of gate 3 which is well known for exit campers but also is shared with scavs. Buy one and keep this in your secure container. The map overall is very small and the spawns are broadly in this area up here or down on the other side. Spawns are always important in EFT but this is heightened even further on factory as the raids are only 20 minutes long and everyone is so close to each other. PvP is usually concentrated in the forklift area which tends to be hot at the start of a raid, or around the office area which can be hot at the start too, but remains an important location later on in the raid also. I've been practicing a much more aggressive style recently which is working really well, but only once you know the maps and where to look, otherwise you'll just get shot as you run about. Factory is a good place to try to improve your skills as an intermediate player, because the map is more formulaic than the others and there are only so many places that people can be, and it's much faster to get into fights and reset or die and load into another raid than the other maps. Similarly, once your immediate money concerns are solved or you just want some free practice, scaving into factory regularly to play aggressive is a good way to get used to it without spending time kitting up and worrying about loadouts. Just before we dive into the map, I want to mention something a little bit different today. I've always loved Tarkov for its near future dystopian setting and it has some strong parallels with another great passion in my life which is that of science fiction. This is the first sponsored video ever on this channel for which I've teamed up with a very good friend of mine, Richard Rimington, who's an up and coming author and has just released the second instalment of his Infinite Void series of sci-fi short stories. From furious combat to emotional heartbreak, all the while exploring the struggles of far future humanity from multiple perspectives, I really love this kind of stuff, and if you're looking for something interesting and new to try out, you can get the first instalment for just £1 on Kindle, or equivalent in other currencies, which I think is an absolute bargain. I have both personally in paperback, but it's well worth checking out if you're into that kind of thing. Right, moving on with the guide. As a solo player, you'll want to figure out who you're fighting against as quickly as possible. Factory supports up to 5 players, and it could be just you against a team of 4, or a 5 player free for all with only other solo players to contend with. This is useful to bear in mind, as for example if you spawn in forklifts and there is no one around, there is a much greater likelihood of running into a 3 or 4 man in the office area itself, as they will all have spawned together and likely on the other side of the map. When playing on your own, we should be looking to minimise the angles on ourselves and try to take fights in areas where you can 1v1 other players without getting mobbed. We'll bear this in mind as we move through the map to pick our spots and maximise our chances of success. Given that you have no buddy watching your back, too many angles will often get you killed, either through lack of checking or having to go slow to clear everything, both of which can be detrimental to your success. Getting into the first location, I seem to spawn in forklifts all the time, which is this area here, so it's a nice place to begin. I actually quite like fighting people in here, since there are effectively four starting points, one down the glass corridor down here, one in the back room where we started, one in the room next to us, which is literally just around the corner on the left-hand side in here, and one which is a little bit further away, which is down in the tunnel areas down here, kind of around the corner. If you spawn in the back room, you do get people charging down the glass corridor at you, which I definitely avoid these days, but if someone does, take advantage of their disadvantageous position while you can. There's nowhere to go if you get stuck, and you can shoot through this box, so it doesn't help. Most scary for me in some ways if someone just sits at the other end waiting prone, because it's at an awkward distance to spot them, especially if they have a scope and you don't. You also have to watch for the other spawn around here on the left hand side, which is usually where I go to clear first if the glass corridor is all done. Remember that sound is incredibly important, and again, especially so in factory because you're all so close together and you can hear lots of steps from a fairly decent range. I'll often stop to listen for a few moments in a safe area, or just when healing and reloading mags. In this case, we can hear the tunnel guy is still down there, and we just have to go flush him out. Where I was most vulnerable in this fight is halfway down the tunnel, as I can't move in or out of cover and I'm running, but our opponent can hear me. However, they left it too late and let me get Pika's advantage as I come around the corner. Note that I still do take some damage though. If you start down the tunnel, I like moving straight up into the forklift area through the stairs, and not up the ramp because there's too many angles. If you move around this corner, it really limits the number of angles that there are on yourself, and you can move up into this small room here and straight through this door. The places that you need to watch is that somebody did spawn in here and there's likely a fight down this corridor. As you move through, people like to sit behind this forklift here, they like to sit behind this box, I've had somebody sit behind here before which is actually incredibly hard to see and was quite irritating, 
and as you move down this hallway you're slightly exposed and people like to sit behind either this forklift as you come around the corner they like to look through this door in particular and sometimes they sit behind these forklifts here and even this one at the back because they feel quite safe. You can also have people like down the corridor itself and just hidden around the side of the wall as well so you have to kind of clear all of these areas. Once you've finished in this room, people do love to sit inside here, which is where grenades become really, really helpful. And what you can do is you can bounce a grenade off the inside of the wall here. Sometimes people sit right at the back if they're playing a little bit tricky because then you don't know exactly where to aim. But normally people will sit themselves just behind these boxes, which means you can kind of pre-aim, you know where you're going to shoot, and you pop round and kill them. So at the glass corridor spawn, you really don't want to be running down the corridor itself. It really is a recipe for disaster. I've done that enough times myself to know that you really don't want to do it. So what you can do is you can double back and cut right across the open. No one's really going to be looking out there because people are going to be checking the other spawns and it's very unlikely that someone's going to spot you as you run across. And this can get you some easy kills on people who are running up the ramp from tunnels, which is the reason why I don't like going up there myself. Or you can go through the door for unexpected entry. But I'd rather head straight up into the office normally if I'm playing a regular raid. One neat idea that can catch people off guard is how quickly you can get to the other side if you have this glass corridor spawn, as most people have a standoff in the office corridor itself, which I hate doing by the way, but you can bypass this using the bathrooms to meet the other spawns where they don't expect you. On the other side of the map, I normally seem to spawn in gate 0, you can either push the corner spawn immediately, like here, where I managed to get a sum total of 0 kills, or you run into the office, which I find a little scary because you can get cut off by the corner spawn and one rare spawn around the corner. Or alternatively, you can take the long route through forklifts, which I do like to take sometimes by going through the tunnels, because that catches people by surprise regularly. Normally the fight has happened, and whoever is left is reloading, healing, looting, or generally struggling a little bit with life, aka the perfect target. From the back corner spawn, this is the same deal, but you can get into office quite easily without being seen by rushing into the stairwell directly by cutting straight across the open and going through this door here. There are two more spawns, one closer to the office and one underground, but these are quite rare for me to get. You have similar choices, but clearly the one close to office means that you can get inside almost immediately or try to turn back and cut some of the other spawns off, and underground by blinking red is perfect to head straight through under the tunnels and to forklift to catch people by surprise, similar to the gate zero spawn. Okay, let's skip forwards about 15 to 20 seconds and go and take a look at the office area itself. Most people go straight up to the top floor and either go immediately into the office room to go and loot or sit at either ends of the corridor on the staircases in this kind of weird stalemate. I personally don't feel that comfortable with the distance and to me it's that awkward interval that's just longer than a regular reflex site gives you to be able to shoot easily over when peeking corners, obviously this is kind of weapon dependent. But there's absolutely no harm in taking the fight closer to get an advantage with your loadout using the bathrooms to cut through. The tiles in here will let anyone know that you're coming, so you best be prepared for the fight. I was convinced by chat here to use a star round to finish the flashbang quest because it's really annoying to do with Zarya's. Yes, I felt like a bad person, but it is incredibly effective. If you're not first in, or just waiting around on the staircase somewhere, you should firstly remember that sound on stairwells doesn't work properly in Tarkov, so don't rely on your ears alone, and you have to cover these angles visually. Secondly, make sure you clear this first landing here. As you move around, you must clear the gap up the top. The next landing here, and this one around the corner where people also like to stand, and then as you finally come up, this angle here. People love to sit at the top of the stairs on both sides because they think they can get a really nice angle down here, and so you just really have to be very careful of it. If you suspect someone is at the other end waiting to pop out and you want to get into the office room, you can throw a grenade down here and use this to cover your approach. People do sit at the either end of the corridor, but in my opinion, you're just asking to get vogged. Entering the office room can be done with either of the two doors, and there are various tricks like this one, which I think Pesley popularised, where you open the first door, you go to the second and open that, and then you run back in through the first door to try and confuse people and make it less clear exactly how you're going to enter and come in. Alternatively, if the corridor is clear, you can lob a grenade in, and that usually gets people moving, or if you hear them doing stuff like healing or reloading, you can sprint in and kill them. At the other end of the corridor, fights can be a little bit more dynamic because firstly you have the vending machine that people like to fight around and also you have the sky bridge which gives another entry point into the office corridor. You're extremely exposed coming up and down the stairs into the sky bridge itself and so typically it's better to be leaving this than entering as you can get down a few ways and even along the outside of office itself if you want to. So you can come along this little path here and there's also ways to get out if you hear people you can jump down here and escape down this way without actually taking any damage. There's also this little Call of Duty style jump that people like to do, which allows you to catch somebody from behind if they're on the stairs and they're trying to fight you and they don't know exactly where you are when you leap. This can be used to great effect and is quite entertaining because it's one of the few kind of trick shots that you can do in Tarkov that probably aren't really supposed to be in the game, but they work nonetheless. 
Also, given that you are so close to the gate 3 extract, with a pair of headphones you can hear people moving around or trying to leave, which means you can either jump down to try to kill them as they leave out of here, because this area is really really loud and gate 3 exit is just in here, and you can use the exit path that we just looked at to chase somebody if they manage to escape through here without you being able to kill them. In terms of loadouts, you'll be fighting against both PMCs, AI scavs, and potentially lots of player scavs if you stay in for more than that first 5 minutes, so a face shield can be really handy. I used to hate running these, but the grubby effect is seemingly way better than it used to be, to the point at which I hardly notice it now. You can mount one of these on the TACKEK or the LZSH Lite if on a budget. This is the Multi Ballistic Face Shield from Peacekeeper 4. You can use your favourite armour, but I've had most success with level 5 and up, because sometimes you just take a lot of damage, especially as a solo, and everything happens so close up that it makes it unavoidable to get hit sometimes. Be sure to bring at least two spare mags, but I would recommend three in general, as well as a stack of ammo in your secure container to reload those magazines. I also take two grenades as minimum now, as these only cost about 7,000 rubles each, and so should be seen as essential as body armour. It doesn't really matter which ones, other than the Vogs which are clearly vicious given the short timer, but it's more for getting people to shift out of various spots. Weapons wise, really anything can work to be honest. I've been ranging between the SVD for Punisher 6, which was actually way better than I thought it would be, ergonomic M4s, MP7s, and Saiga 12s with a drum mag of AP20, which was much like the SVD in a funny kind of way. I always run a headset for the enhanced hearing, but there are plenty of Altins on this map, so make sure you use ammo that stands a decent chance. M855A1 with 43 pen for the M4, and FMJ with 40 pen for the MP7 are probably the minimum that you want to be using so that you can deal with anything. At this stage, the best way to continue is to jump into a few more situations that were interesting to see how these things can play out with some successes and some fails. There is always something more to learn, and I'm continuously finding out these new things every day myself. I'll never claim to be the best player ever, so if I can make it work, then you surely can too. Anyone else? Nope. Let's try and see where this people is. Wow, he's right there. Splint. <laughs> I don't know where- that guy didn't know where I was. Worth going the other side? It sounds pretty quiet now. Let's just reset this one, I think. See- oh, I killed a, a guy here. Oh, was he the guy at the end of the corridor? Right, let's go. Let's just see how this goes. Sounds like a lot of guys on the other side. See, there's no one over here. It's probably a big team. Ah, oh, crap. I didn't see him in the dark. I literally missed him in the dark. I thought there'd be like loads of more people. Because there was nobody on my side. And so I figured there was going to be like a team or whatever and they were going to be upstairs. I didn't actually hear them though, which is probably the, the mistake that I made. Goodness, I'm dead. Got another one. Oh, um, they're all dead. Oh, 
god, this guy was level one. Right, what about this next one? What happened to this guy? Oh my god, he's level one as well. And then there's a guy in the middle. Well, they're just running like M9s. Wait, and this guy's level one as well. What? He's running a fast MT. Oh, you get given one with night vision on it. You. Wow, there's someone down there. All right, it's probably good enough, isn't it? Face shield, save the day there. Server wipe? Um, I think it was three, not four. So if you learned something or enjoyed today's video and want to support the channel, please consider dropping a like and a sub as it helps with visibility for those who haven't found me yet on YouTube. To see when I'm streaming, you can follow me on Twitter and Twitch where I'm currently live twice a week, once on Friday at 9pm UK time for the Scav Talk podcast, which you can check out the link for in the description below and a regular Tarkov stream on Saturday 2pm UK time. And with all that said, I'll see you guys next time and have fun in your raids.